everybody, Joe Patty here. And today I'm going to do lots of little tiny things to just uh, experiment with stuff with resin and different additives and things like that just to see what kind of what kind of design we can get out of it or what kind of it makes or whatever. Like this is um, glue right here. My glue sticks. I have some glue sticks with the sparkles in them that I love. And sometimes I wonder how I can incorporate that if it'll work out or not. So this is just glue. And also I was going to tell you guys that I'm getting blind as a bat. This is what I walk around the house with. <laughs> I can't see or read a thing. And my, my eyes are going bad. My right eye is really bad. And just want to let you guys know that I'm going to stay fearless in this. So if I go blind, as that moment as I feel it coming on, I'm going to start lining up my paints and everything and the colors and stuff like that so that I can help myself and continue to paint. <laughs> okay, so I want to tell you too, like, I'm not going completely blind in both my eyes. It's just my right eye that's real bad, but my left eye picks up a lot of the blurred vision stuff, so I can still see colors and things, but it is going to be hard to do intricate artwork eventually, like down the road. So, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Stuff like this, little trees that I make and things. The, those things are going to be hard to do later, and I don't even know. might even be impossible, but aren't those cute? So cute, cute, cute little trees, everybody. I'm kind of working on something. It takes time to work on something that you, you know, like a big piece that you want. And I'm working on something that's like a mystical, magical forest kind of thing. And it just kind of takes all month to work on because i got to be in the right mood, and I go to it on and off, you know. All right, everybody, let's get started on some experiments. Let's have some fun. So I want to tell you guys something. Remember when I said in the video that it almost looks like there's some salt in there? I forgot. <laughs> it is salt. This is my pink Himalayan salt, and that's what I made these rocks with. I usually make my homemade rocks with other stuff, but this is actually my pink salt, and how I made this was... I put a little uh, glitter in there. I'll show you what glitter I got. Hang on. So you guys can get it right. Get it right. Okay. Okay, so I put this glitter in there, and there isn't anything on here. I think I just got it at Walmart. It's just like a white glitter. and has a little green or whatever. It's just kind of holographic. But anywho... Uh, I put that salt in here in this cup with a little bit of that holographic glitter and a few drops of white pinata ink right here. And I shook it up like that, switched it around rather, and that's how I got my little pink rocks. Now this isn't part of my, this isn't on my other video of how I made all my homemade rocks. This is just something different that I did. So, but that's how you can make rocks too, guys. So if you don't have a bag of rocks, it, that you can find in the yard, out in the driveway, or buy at Walmart, whatever. Go get you some pink Himalayan salt, <laughs> and you can change the color. So I just added a little white to it to make it more pale. But they're really crystally and really shiny, so you can make it any kind. I could put turquoise in there. So it's just another way to make some homemade rock for your geodes or whatever you want to do, your beach scenes and whatnots. All right, everybody, let's move on. Okay, next tip. If you guys want to get your air bubbles out, don't use a blow dryer. When you use a blow dryer, what's it doing? It's blowing air everywhere, which creates dust, particles, and everything everywhere, and actually blowing res more resin off your artwork. Also, don't use a heat gun. A heat gun, again, you're blowing air around. It's just hot air, and it's kind of destroying your artwork, your you're pushing the resin in places it doesn't want to go. You're heating up areas that are hotter than other parts in it. It should be self-leveling anyway. And what you're doing is you're, you're heating up one side too much, too fast, like a clump of it. So again, too, you're blowing particles around. You're putting too much heat into one area. It gets too hot, too fast. You're not, being, you're not able to move fast enough like you can with the torch. You need to use a blowtorch. You need to use one of those little kitchen torches. Believe me, it's the best thing ever, and don't be afraid of it. 
you'll learn how to handle it. It's it's the best thing if you want to use rest. So I wanted to tell you guys about these gloves. I've mentioned them once before, but they are amazing. I love these gloves. Um, you can only get them a box of 100 or more. I tried to find a box of 50, but I couldn't. And I tried to find something other than black, and I couldn't find it. But I wanted to tell you something. These gloves are the best gloves I have ever, ever worked with. It is well worth the money. They're like $13 and some change or whatever. And I paint every day. These gloves will last me a, a box of 100, probably six months or more. I can wear the same pair on more than one painting. I can take them off, put them back on, even when I'm doing resin. And that's why I got them was for like resin work. Uh, if for some reason it doesn't stick to these gloves, the resin doesn't stick to them. I can reuse them. It's just, I love them. They're powder latex free or whatever also. And they got this like a little diamond, uh, rough feel to them, a little diamond edge or whatever, little dots and stuff like this. I got something on these already. I've worn these three or four times already with some of my resin work. They're amazing. You guys have got to pick some up. And I'm just telling you this because I, I want you to really be happy when you're working with gloves. Or they fit perfect. I got the medium. And uh, they're, they, they just fit really good. They're a little bit big on me for a medium. I don't mind. Uh, I think that they'll fit most people. I think a medium is kind of a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. But, anywho, these are the best gloves ever. This isn't a paid advertisement or anything. I'm just telling you. <laughs> you're going to love it. If you got a box of these, I guarantee you won't regret it. I do have them down below my Amazon link. If you, I'll put a link below there. Or you can buy them somewhere else, whatever. I'm just trying to help you out here. Let's talk about this resin stuff just for a second here. I use different kinds of resin. I actually use a couple other ones that aren't in this picture here. And I have said before, it's not a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. They all do different things, but the end result is pretty much the same. Um, there's the other kind, like a polymer and uh, stuff like that. There's different ones that you can buff with your wax, like even a car wax, to make it shiny. And that's the kind of resin you should use for making jewelry, not not what you're looking at here. You need to get the kind of resin that you can polish and buff. When it's dry, it gets scratches, you can just buff it out, you know. You can't buff the glaze coat or the art resin or the FX epoxy you know, hardener stuff, you know. Some of those um, other ones. I'm not really sure, actually, about the art resin. Um... I don't think you can add car wax to this. I'm, I'm not sure, but I don't think you can. I can look into that or whatever. All right, the other thing I want to tell you is that your room, you should have room temperature warmer because uh, the, the resin just doesn't work. Like I live in Wisconsin, it's really damn cold up here, you guys, and it's bad, and you can't, if your resin is sitting out overnight even in the room and you go to work with it, in a place like this up north, it should be just a couple degrees above the room temperature in order to get it to be more smooth and make it work right. You can also give it a bath. And what I mean by bath is this. Say you can get a bigger tub or whatever, like a Tupperware, and you put warm water in there, not hot, warm water, and you could set your resin and your hardener in it and uh, for about 10 minutes to get it nice and uh, warm. That works best. It really flows a lot easier. But when you you got to be careful. You take it out. You really need to dry it. You don't want any water on your resin. And I'll show you that in experiment coming up here. That uh, how water and resin mixes. How that works. What water does to resin. Another tip for you guys. If your resin, if you go buy resin, you should open up the box and look at it first. If your hardener is yellow, that means it's old. And this is what causes uh, bubbles not to pop right. It doesn't cure right. And you will also get a yellow finish. It just, it'll never get clear on you. So I think when I got this, I've been ripping on this FX epoxy, whatever. But I think that, uh, I don't know if it turned yellow when it was out in the cold or whatever during delivery. Or if it, if, anyway, either way, it came like that. So I got it like that. And that's why I've been having such a hard time with it. So I did some study on it. I looked it up and found out that if your hardener is yellow, it's old. Don't use it. Take it back. Whatever. Whatever you can do, you know. I don't know. I mean, I can't take this back now, but I hope you guys don't uh, 
And I hope it doesn't happen to you. So if you encounter that, get rid of it. Don't buy it. Open up the box when you go to buy your resin. Look at it right away before you use it. If it's yellow, return it. Okay, clean up. Clean up is really easy. I first wipe everything off with a paper towel. So you're going to uh, reuse even a stir stick. You can wipe it with paper towel and then wet ones. I swear by those. You can also use just rubbing alcohol or whatever and then wash your hands with soap and water if you got anything on there. But at first, take all the excess off with a paper towel. Wet ones, great. And then um, I wanted to tell you guys this. I've mentioned it before, but if you don't have any stir sticks, you can use the back of a paintbrush. And you can stir whatever you want with that, your paints, resin, whatever. And then uh, I just wipe it with a paper towel to get the thick excess off and then use your wet ones or uh, even a Kleenex if you have, don't have any paper towels or anything. Kleenex with a little bit of rubbing alcohol on it. And if you got any sticky left on your hands, you can always just run them under soap and water after you use your wet ones. It works perfectly, guys. Also, resin does not stick to Scylla putty or wax paper. And I found something else out. Let me tell you what this is, everybody. Just because I'm the little scientist in me is always digging into stuff. This is my gum. Resin doesn't stick to gum. See that? I made that with gum. I put a piece of gum down and I poured resin over it. And that's what I got. <laughs> okay, everybody. Silly as it sounds, I'm just experimenting. I want to tell you guys, you can resin anything once it's dry. A spray painted piece of artwork, mosaic tile artwork, um, artwork with ink on it, acrylics, even gold leaf pen, anything at all. As long as it's completely dry, then you can you can put the resin on it to shine up your artwork. All right, everybody, here's today's experiment. I'm going to do some funky stuff. I'm going to mix resin with all this stuff that you're looking at, and I'll tell you what that is, and let's see what we get. I have water, I have acetone, like you would remove your fingernail polish with. I got vinegar, I've got glitter glue, I've got rubbing alcohol, I got resi blast, I got pigment powders, and I got metallic acrylic paints. And then I've got my glue gun stuff right here. And I want to see what happens. And I also have some string gel. All right, everybody, let's have some fun and experiment. Hi everyone, I'm mixing up the resin here with Primary Elements Pigments. I'm using, um, let's see, I'm using African Jade, Guatemala Green, and Emerald in my Primary Elements Pigment Powders. Alright, in here I have the Metallics. By Deco Art. Let's see what color is that. It's blue teal. It's just teal. <laughs> and then here I have my glitter glue. Just squirted some glue right out of the bottle. Let's see what that looks like. Looks like it's turning it white. But we'll see if it dries that way. Or if it dries clear. And if there's any glitter in there. And this was from uh, just the glitter glue bottle, the sticky glue, iridescent. Okay, now, let's try to pour some of this on here, and then we'll get with some experiments going here. And then I have some clear here for uh, something else I want to do. All right, so here's the glitter glue. Let's just pour it on there. Spread it around. Also, I was going to get into some other stuff, like why resin smells stronger than other resins and stuff like that. But you know what? That's not so important. It's more important about applications and things I wanted to do and artwork and stuff you guys want to do. All right. That is the metallics. And that was a liquid acrylic. So I want to see how, I'm curious to see how that mixes well and stays on rather. See what the results are of that. All right, here come the primary elements. This is like goopy already. And of course, you know, I'm following all the instructions. Look at that, it's like rubber already because it's that 
cheap ass crappy resin that FX stuff that I shouldn't have done used especially when I was trying to just do an experiment here it's terrible isn't it I mix it up just the way it's supposed to be mixed Jeez Louise I just don't understand why that's like that. Look at that. Isn't that terrible? It's the first one I poured in here. Okay, now, let's just drop a little clear on there, on top. And I was going to tell you something about, uh, like, glitter and that. When you put glitter or rocks or something on top of resin... You should wait till the resin sets a little bit because otherwise it's just going to sink right down in there. I'm going to tilt it a little bit and see what it does against that glue right there. Do it this way for you. Let it fall right on over that glue stick stuff. Just to see if the glitter from the glue stick will pop through or not. Okay, now let's do some tests, everybody. We'll get the string gel done in a minute. I want this to dry a little. Well, I want it to cure a little, rather. Okay. Let's see what this... Uh, Rubbing alcohol does. Let's see, and I noticed it's not doing much because it was pigment powder. We're not using inks. Now, when you use inks, the rubbing alcohol will probably give you bigger, better, like cell type stuff. All right, now let's do some Resi Blast. We'll put a drop of that into over here where the metallic is. We'll put one over here where the primary elements are. And let's put one in the glue. Not seeing much of, too much of a difference compared to the alcohol. I think it works better in the alcohol, though, because, like I said, if it was ink, it would work better. But also, upon further review, using the Resi Blast would be best used if you had a color underneath. Because, see, I can see the canvas through there. The canvas is showing through. If you had another base color, you could get your cells without the canvas showing through so much more. All right. Now let's do some acetone. Some fingernail polish remover that's actually eaten away at the plastic lid here. And it was just the fumes that did that. That's amazing how that did that. You see that? I put acetone in this plastic thing and it, look at it did. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Where's my squirt bottle? Here we go. Okay. Drop an acetone around. Not doing a whole lot. I guess we'll have to experiment with ink next instead of just uh, pigment powder and metallics. All right, you know what? Let's do a piece of some vinegar, everybody. Just cause. Let's see what vinegar will do. It's amazing what you can do with some household stuff here. So, to me, it looks like if you don't have any Resi Blast, acetone, or rubbing alcohol, vinegar gives you cells. Well, 
and they're subtle too. They stay in a bubble shape right there. Isn't that weird? I just thought I'd try something like that. I searched the internet, didn't see anywhere where anybody else had tried this. I was looking because I didn't want an explosion or whatever, so I had to look up some scientific stuff just to see what my mixtures are like. Okay, now I want to show you guys what water does in resin. It doesn't do well, I'm sure. Okay, let's find a spot here. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Water is stained bubbly. because water and resin does not mix. So it's just gonna stay on the surface. It's never gonna sink in or do much of anything. It's gonna make it uh, a little gummy. Okay, I see the resin poking through here, but I'm gonna see the water dripping down like that. Just a fun little experiment, you guys. Now, I'm gonna try something else here. I'll just leave it like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna sprinkle some glitter on here. And Try some string gel. To me, the string gel, I think, would be more like a, uh, just like, like resin, you know? Let's see how that does. If it sinks in, how much it sinks in? Does it liquefy it anyway? What does it do? Some plain resin. Put that back on there like that. And put it on top of that. And see, when you put resin on top of some that's already starting to cure, it gives it a little bit of a dimension. Depends on what you're looking for, but it is best if you want the more of a 3D look, wait till that other bottom layer dries and cures. Well, it doesn't even have to cure all the way. And wait till it uh, about two hours later after your project starts. If you set it aside, like when I make my coasters, about two hours later you can add to it. Isn't that funny, you guys? What the vinegar did. <laughs> Drop it again. Of course, it's starting to harden and cure now, so I don't think it's going to do much. Because it's not like wet. Well, it is. It's doing it. And I'm going to tell you something. It's digging a hole all the way to the bottom of the canvas. <laughs> Look at that. You want cells, this vinegar is going to give it to you. But like I said, you're best to... Uh, have an underlying color. Look at the greens coming out from the, the vinegars making it green, like the on the blues there. That's another thing to keep in mind. The vinegar, anything that you use could change the color of whatever you're doing. It's always best to do a trial run first. That is so cool right there. I want to see if I can show you guys that. Different things do different things.
And then when you do stuff like this, you stare at it, wondering, geez, what could I do with this? <laughs> Look at that. See, yeah, the vinegar is going to sit on top more once it starts to cure. I think once it starts to cure, anything is going to just kind of sit on top. I'm not going to be able to get much out of that when it's already starting to cure. And get hard like that, see? So we're just mixing the vinegar up in there. <laughs> Turning it kind of green. All right, let's drop some white on here that actually has a little bit of uh, my white in this little bottle here has uh, a few drops of the coconut milk hair gel in here. Just start dropping it around. Of course, you know, I'm mixing it now with all this is vinegar in certain spots and water in certain spots. I'm not going to get the true effect. I gotta drop it where I know there's nothing else in there. But as far as I know, I don't think that uh, hair gel or any kind of um, silicone oil is going to work on resin like this. That's why they just have like the Resi Blast. That's what it's best for. And you can get some good effects by putting the clear resin on top of your project, like in shapes or whatever. It does really cool things. But I see that white like that. Now what I'm gonna do is take my mask off here. And I'm gonna get my straw. I have I use like to use rubber straws. I'm gonna blow on that and see what that does. All I did was separate. I'm not going to get any foam effect from something like that when it already has uh, when it's meant for acrylics. Let me see something here now. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this little experiment, and I'll be back when it dries for the ending of this video so you can see exactly what's going on. All right, first things first, everybody. The glitter from the glue gun did not pop through. It just looks like clear gel, shiny gel from the resin, the resin look, whatever with dots in it. I had a gold and a blue glitter and it just didn't, it didn't pop through. You can just see like blue dots or little gold dots, but the shine and the, the glitter is actually just coming from the resin. Now, onto the rubbing alcohol. Uh, forget about this. I just want, I meant to mention that earlier. This is nothing. This is just something I was testing. It has nothing to do with what we did. <laughs> now, the rubbing alcohol it didn't work so great on the uh, resin. What it did do was just make some cloudy circles and separated the paint, which later ended up fusing together when the curing process started and the resin started to level out. The rubbing alcohol would have worked really good on ink, though. So they just dissipated, little dissipated circles. The Resi Blast was perfect. It worked really good. But I tilted it so much and added so many other little things that uh, the Resi Blast really isn't showing on here now. But in a short, yes, the Resi Blast would have worked perfectly if you want to get uh, some cell look. And that's what it's for, for resin. Resi Blast resin. However, I want to tell you one thing. It's very greasy. When this dried and cured and it's been over a week, there was so, it was so much grease on here. It was really slippery and greasy and slimy, and that was from the Resi Blast. So you have to take a mild soap to, and water to it, whatever, and wash it off gently to get that off there. Use some 
baking soda, baking powder, foot powder, baby powder, something first. And uh, put a glove on. Don't use it with your fingertips because it's oily. If you use a toothbrush, sometimes I've used that, but it depends on what it is. If it, you want a really smooth surface, you can be you can scratch it with a toothbrush. So be careful. Just you're better off to just wear a glove. Put some powder on. Go like this. Blow the powder off and then run it under some water, warm water, not hot, not cold, warm water, soapy water, and have your glove on and just kind of get it off there. That'll keep it from being uh, slimy. You got to get that. Uh, resi blast residue off there or any kind of oils that you use because it was also had a little oil to it because um we use that hair gel all right what's next everybody I'm trying to go in chronological order here <laughs> all right now the acetone the fingernail polish remover nada diddly squat didn't do jackola nothing happened didn't do nothing Probably work well with inks, but, but we know it doesn't really work well with resin. Okay, everybody, now I want to talk about the vinegar. Awesomeness, I think it's great. And what I meant by subtle, I meant like one dot at a time. So like when you drop, um, you make cells or whatever, you do a swipe on acrylic pour or something like that, and you get all these cells that pop up. Vinegar just gave me one at a time. Kind of like Resi Blast, if you drop it. It kind of spreads out and it'll create more than just one, but I think it does it like with each dot. But the vinegar is like that too. It does it with each dot, but the difference is they are crater-like dots. See, let me see if I can get that in the camera there. Um, they're holes, so that's why it's best to have another color underneath. They're subtle in a way that's just one dot at a time, but yet it's so deep. Like if you want to like uh, make a moon painting or do something like that, you got these awesome craters. And this is the green that I was talking about that kind of just came out when I had that Guatemala green in here. It kind of spread out a little bit. It's amazing, everybody. I just can't get over it. I mean, it's just like a hole. <laughs> okay, and of course the water. I showed you that when we poured it. That I put the water on there. Water don't do nothing. It just kind of... I actually see what the water did. It just pulled the paint out a little bit and dried up. Water doesn't do nothing. And water and resin just don't mix. Kind of like water and electricity. Just don't mix, everybody. Just don't mix. Okay, let's talk about the string gel. Oh, amazing, everybody. If you wanted to create like a different lakes and separate lakes or do like the, the world, oceans and stuff, the string gel actually separated it can see where the gel was. I'll get you in the camera there. It separated everything. It was weird. And I think it's because I waited till the resin set up a little bit too, because if you do it right away, it's just going to sink in there. I have to try it once the resin is set up even more, because I'm curious to see what that would do. I can even see some of the clear white gel from the string, from the string gel, and it changes colors as it goes along. But it, it leaves divots. It's like a, um, what do you call it? It leaves like a little, um, like a river runs through it. <laughs> what do you call it? What, what's the word I'm thinking of, everybody? Like a little gully or something. Like a little valley. Or a little, what is that word I'm thinking of? It's on the tip of my tongue. A trench. Yes, that's what I'm thinking of. It's like a trench. <laughs> it's weird. So weird. So cool, though. I hope you guys are picking this up. Okay, let's talk about the clear part. Where I put the clear on there. You can see what I was talking about, the 3D look. That blue is, the metallic is underneath that the clear top it's so cool to put it on the clear on top of other applications and it just kind of blends in it's a really really cool effect okay now this is the white the hair gel acrylic acrylic white paint with the hair gel it's actually 3d because that acrylic and the hair gel that coconut hair gel was not meant for resin but 
a certain effect you're looking for it might work for. It's 3D, it's hard, it's crunchy, and shiny. <laughs> it's just weird. Like I said, you won't get the foam effect because it's acrylic on resin. All right, now let's talk about the glitter. Glitter, just like I thought it would do. Real pretty, stayed on there. And I had that holographic type glitter really shows up. And the main thing was because I didn't put the glitter on top right away. I let the resin harden a little bit and set up some. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this little experiment. I had a lot of fun learning myself. So, and I like teaching you guys some stuff. Some things you could uh, really apply some of these applications that I showed you today towards a different project. You never know what you're going to come up with, everybody. So grab your glue gun and your glitter. Don't forget to wear your ruby slippers. In other words, do it your way, any way you want to. And here's your meditation thought for today. We can't always control the sea, but we can learn how to surf the waves. In other words, you can't always control what's going to happen and what you're going to do here. But you can surf it by a keep experimenting, everybody. Just keep experimenting. Arrivederci, everybody. See you again soon back in the studio.